The MLB awards were just announced. We just talked about Ronald Acuna winning the MVP award. And it wasn't long ago that we were talking about Michael Soroka as a legitimate Cy Young candidate. I mean, even as a rookie, he was that dominant. Then obviously we know what happened. It's the back-to-back -back torn Achilles. It's the shoulder issues. It's the not really being as dominant as he once was. Will he stay with the Braves? Are the Braves going to see it through? We now know they are not. They have traded him to the White Sox along with Jared Schuster, Nicky Lopez, and Braden Shoemake. Kind of an interesting trade here because their base Braves are basically just sending away a little bit of money and, and like some valuable pieces. I mean, like Michael Soroka may not have been a like great MLB pitcher anymore and he had no options and I and he was probably going to get non-tendered anyways, which means he would have become a free agent. But, you know, Braden Shoemake, Jared Schuster, I mean, when you look at the prospect list, they're on the top 10. Now, that's not necessarily meaning much when it comes to the Braves, but they're not – they're like there's a little bit of upside there. Like there's there's a reason why some a team would take them. Nicky Lopez, I mean, he's a solid player. Like he was an arbitration candidate, uh, going to get $4 million. Uh, but, yeah, just – an interesting trade here, and obviously the biggest thing is, you know, Michael Soroka is no longer going to be the Braves, and I, I don't think there's a single person in Braves country that's not absolutely just like, hey, please, please get back to where you once was. Like, I, I know it sucks that it's not with the Braves, but do it, do it, because this guy, I mean, when you talk about a pro's pro, a, a, a great person, a great human being, a hard worker, a great talent. That is what Michael Soroka is, and hopefully he can rebound from everything that's been that, that's been put against him and, and, and do this. Yeah, this is one of those uh, trades that you know it's going to draw criticism just because of the name uh, and you know the emotional factor in all of this for Braves fans because Soroka is so beloved uh, among the fan base. Uh, but yeah, it's drawing criticism. But you know what? Of what would have also drawn similar criticism is if we non-tendered Soroka and Lopez and, and, and the same thing could be said for Schuster and Shoemake one year down the down the road and said and we're all sitting here you know in hindsight going oh we should have traded them a year ago so this is you know you know damn if you do damn if you don't sort of it, it sort of thing and, and it's unfortunate that Soroka might not realize his full potential with the Braves but that's not to say that he can't do it with the White Sox because you know again he's only 25 years old he made it back to the majors last year he was fully healthy in 2023 he dealt with something at the end of the season but it wasn't anything major uh he flashed some of the stuff that we saw nearly won him the rookie of the year award uh so there is you know reason to be optimistic for Braves fans and I think I speak for most Braves fans when uh you know, everybody wants him to succeed, whether it's a Bra in a Braves uniform or not. He's just that kind of guy. He's so beloved in the fan base. Uh, it just so happened that the timelines did not work out between the two parties. That is the Braves and Soroka. You know, Soroka needs to pitch every fifth day. And with the White Sox, he'll be able to do that here in Atlanta. The fact of the matter is, is he was not going to be able to do that. You know, we still expect the Braves to add another, you know, impact piece to this rotation, which, which, which he would have been pushed out of the rotation, probably not been not made it on the major league roster because listen, you still got you know. Let's just assume they go get another starter, which we all do. Uh, that 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 pushes him further, probably you know, in the realm of AJ Smith, Shaver, and Hurston Waldrop, and he has no options like you mentioned. So there's really nothing the Braves could have done. I think Alex Anthopoulos maximized his hand that he was dealt. Unfortunately, it sucks for us Braves fans that we might have to see you know. Again, we want Soroka to succeed. It just sucks it might uh, be with another team. Now, on the flip side, obviously what we got, Aaron Bummer, you know, m maybe not the sexiest name, uh, certainly not the sexiest um, numbers if you're just looking at surface level. But if you dig Is a little sexy, deeper. Though? Is he sexy? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. So, <laughs> what do he look like? I have no idea what the guy looks like. Uh, surely not as good looking as you and me. Uh, yeah. my I, we do. I mean, look, come on. I mean, what? Like, yeah. what are we doing here? You got but the cowboy guy, hat. You got the mustache. You know, I got this. Back, patch back beard, to but... bummer. Back to bummer. <laughs> the Braves needed. We have other than AJ Minner, there is no surefire southpaw in the uh, in the bullpen. We're going to rely on Tyler Matzik. Listen, I am as big a fan as anybody as Tyler Matzik. He's coming off a major injury. Same with Dylan Lee, not as major. But we can't rely on hurt guys or, you know, rehabbing guys. So this is just a step in that direction of kind of, you know, bolstering the pin to face, you know, potentially another 
Philly's lineup that's heavy with left-handed uh, hitters. So this is just a step in that direction. You look at the underlying metrics. They all point to severe positive regression. You got to love this kind of move because generally speaking, all of these were expiring assets from the Braves point of view, whether it was Soroka out of options, uh, Nicky Lopez's money. You don't want to pay a bench piece that much money. Uh, Brent Shoemake uh, and Schuster kind of, you know, their values diminished over the past year. So, you know, Alex Anthopoulos did what, you know, I guess he maximized what his hand was. You can't really be upset at this kind of move. And especially if Bummer comes out and, you know, has that regression that I think a lot of people expect in 2024. I think the, the, the thing that I'm looking at here the most, and it's not the Michael Soroga thing, like, listen, and I want to be clear about the options thing. Options means he could not go back to Gwinnett. It's meaning he had to be on the major league roster. If we're going to get another pitcher, you have now, like, let's assume, I think we all assume we're going to yeah. get at least one more pitcher, right? You have right. Freed, Morton, Strider, pitcher to be named. And then you have AJ smith Shaver, Hurston Waldrip, you know, uh, uh, and maybe they get Bryce two Elder. pitchers. Who knows? Like, yeah. Bry yeah, oh, Bry Bryce Elder, a guy who was an all-star last year. You know, yeah. you have like a, a lot a lot of guys on this roster that would be competing for that spot. There's no way. They're not going to just give it to Michael Soroka because like this no. is, you know, a charity case. Like, oh, Mike, you can have it. He has to be on the roster the entire season. The reality of the situation is that was not going to happen. So I just want to make that clear as the reason why he was included. The one thing, I, the one other interesting aspect is Nicky Lopez uh, getting traded in this deal. And I don't know if that was just like a necessary asset for uh, for the trade for to the White Sox. Like they really wanted Nicky Lopez. Maybe they really liked him. Uh, but I think Nicky Lopez is a fantastic utility infielder that yeah, maybe is. isn't worth $4 million, but maybe he is. Like, he, he's good enough. To, like, it's not – like, if, if you're pinching pennies over a million dollars for utility infielder, my biggest thing is what else are you pinching pennies for? So, like, that that was, like, the interesting part of this because, like, I, like now you have to go out and get another utility infielder that's probably not going to be as good as Nicky Lopez – and he's probably going to pay him $2 million. And it's like, oh, you saved $2 million there. Like, do we, is, is that, are we that desperate for $2 million? And we've been talking about whether the Braves are going to be big spenders and stuff like that. So I might just be like looking way too much into it, but I am just kind of like, are we saving every single, and maybe we just need to save every single dollar because we're about to make a big play. And like, that's what we're going to do. But I did think that was an intriguing thing because I thought they, I, I thought they would tender a contract to Nikki Lopez. Yeah, I think that's a that's a reasonable uh, point to bring up. But, you know, I think we all expect I, – I think I'm going to go as far as I'm expecting Vaughn Grisham to be that left fielder. Uh, and in a pinch, you know, he could, pr he could play third base, probably Good can't point, play shortstop, point. but can't play second base. And then you just throw anybody out there uh, in left field, you know, whoever is on your bench. So maybe that's their thinking. But that is a, a very valid point, saving $4 million for a club that's going to be top 10 in payroll. Uh, in, you know, the highest payroll in team history. That's a very good point that, you know, are we really pinching pennies over this? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think, I think it is valid. I think there's some legitimacy to it. Now we'll see what happens this entire off season. I've already seen people like, is this a, is this a hint towards the clearing Dylan space Cease for Otani? I, I've heard that this, is this the, <laughs> is this the hint towards the Dylan Cease trade in the future? They're just setting this up. I don't know how that works out. Like they're setting up a trade. Why didn't they just include them in there? You know, like <laughs> what are we setting up? But uh, Hey, I will say GMs with working relationship. That is, that is a thing, but uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, coming up after the break, we got a fantastic segment. The guys from Bulldogs. Now DJ Shockley is going to join us to break down the Tennessee and Georgia game.